What do you think, um, you know, currently uh, is the biggest challenge faced by deaf Canadians today? I think the biggest challenge is the ignorance that society has towards deaf people and deaf issues. Uh, is, there needs to be access to information that just isn't there right now. You still have people who think uh, if you're uh, deaf, you have to learn to hear, you have to learn to speak. They don't understand that there are different ways of communication, that there's sign language that we can write, that we have all kinds of ways of accommodating in terms of communication. There's pagers now uh, available to us, there's a TTY, there's video conference, bell relay service, but still you have those feelings out there of people wondering how can deaf people function without depending on speech and hearing. That's a common question I still get. How do, you know, can deaf people drive? They still think that deaf people can't get a job or that deaf people aren't going to get, be able to access university education. So it's an attitudinal barrier and we have to educate people. Um, you know, unless you get a famous movie star out there, you, you're, not, you're going to see a lot of that uh, myth being perpetuated. Right now we've got you know, FBI, and that's having an increase in awareness. Marley Maitland made a difference. Me becoming a deaf MPP, you know, certainly there are those changes, but there's still a lot of people who have that same old mentality saying that if you can't hear, somehow there's a relationship between hearing and thinking intellect and, and the ability to hear. And so most of the time you still hear people saying that you can only develop language through an auditory channel and not understanding that you can develop language through your eyes. There's visual modes of communication. A lot of people just still don't think about that. The second biggest challenge is, again, deals with attitude because so many people think that we can't do things. And I call that autism. I'm not sure if you've heard that word, but it's in the same way as discrimination against deaf people on the basis of hearing. Um, in the same fashion that we talk about racism, looking down on people because of the color of their skin or because of their race or origin. And we have a word within the deaf community called autism, uh, which is an attitude towards deaf people. And uh, we need to educate people so that we realize that autism is not acceptable, period, and that we need to have respect and there needs to be tolerance of, of um, diversity and that we need to change attitudes. How that's done, I think, is through the media, through TV and interviews, people getting out there. I think the media can be very helpful in telling stories and showing our accomplishments. We need to educate parents as well as those who are training new teachers. There's still a lot of old thoughts out there. I think the universities that are teaching um, uh, teacher of the deaf training programs, you know, and not just that, but another university program, social work, doctors. We need to change the thinking that medical or pathological view of deafness that being deaf is okay. We have our own language, we have a community, we have our own heritage, and we have our own celebrations. We celebrate the achievements of deaf people. And there, if you think of the book written by Dr. Clifton Carbon, who wrote uh, Deaf Heritage in Canada, that documents many of those achievements. And it, I guess it gets down to the discussion of is deaf, are deaf people part of a race or a disability? And I mean, we see ourselves as being another race. And we, because we definitely have our own culture and we celebrate that. We have our own language, our own community, our own history. We've had our struggles and our fights to break through barriers, and we celebrate those. And someday, I certainly would like to see that we have a deaf, uh, you know, a deaf national flag. Maybe we'll have our own country someday. Um, you know, the movie uh, Deaf Planet, that, or the show Deaf Planet, that's on right now, uh, Joanne Cripps, I'm sure you know, and, and Anita Small have been involved in that project where kids go off on a rocket to another planet. So instead of Earth, which has the hearing world, <laughs> and I've often thought of that, wouldn't it be nice to have uh, another planet or another country called Ieth, because it's based on eyes as opposed to Earth, E-A-R, which seems to be based on auditory language. I think that that's kind of a goal, a dream. It's not going to happen now, but someday we're going to have that kind of recognition, a place where deaf people can enjoy their way of life, 
where access is complete, and hearing people can learn to sign and be part of that world as well.